Hello and welcome back to Bergucci and Buffa in the morning on 790 AM and 104.3 HD2 The Ticket. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit of fighting, a little bit of UFC. There was a big card the other night, Adesanya versus Fatori, one of our favorite fighters, Israel Adesanya. And I just want to go through and recap this whole night. It was a great card, one of the best cards of the year, very interesting fights. And let's just go over this. I mean, I want to start with, with Jamahal Hill. Jamahal Hill was one of the most promising up-and-coming fighters coming out of the heavyweight division. And sadly, he got knocked out by Paul Craig. I mean, what do you think about this? One of the best heavyweight contenders coming up. He was one or two more fights, and he was going to get that title shot, most likely. And he's getting knocked out by Paul Craig. Um, I mean, crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, I mean, you expected this guy to come in. I, I'm pretty sure he, he definitely was favored. Um, I, I know... I mean, that Paul Craig just outperformed him. I mean, just was better from the start. Never even had, like, a chance of where he was, like... He destroyed, He destroyed like, every total strike. He was... It was just a domination. I mean, it was 43 to 3 total strikes. It That's just crazy. wasn't even a competition. It was very shocking. I mean, Jamal Hill will still have his chances. He'll go back. Yeah, we'll hopefully back. we'll see him back. And then the next fight we're going to talk about, everyone's fan favorite... The Nate Diaz Leon Edwards fight. I mean, this was one of the craziest fights I've ever seen Nate Diaz in, and that's a lot speaking because he's been in some crazy fights. I mean, he he was getting was getting taken down. I mean, Leon had five minutes of control time. He was winning this fight, and then late, late, late into the fight, after Nate was already bleeding, beat up everything, he just started pursuing, and he literally almost, if there was one more round, Nate Diaz was knocking out Leon Edwards, and that was just crazy to see someone that old be able to take that beating and then just come back and, and almost win the fight. Well, I mean, the crazy thing is, is he almost did win in, in regular time. I mean, the guy, the guy landed him with a, he, I think Leon dodged, I know, uh, Nate dodged a hook, and then he hooked him, and then he hooked um, Leon with the left, and he had him, like, he was stumbling, and there was a clip of it on Twitter, he, he literally, instead of finishing, he pointed at him. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's Nate Diaz. That's Nate Diaz, that's, that's what he does, he's, he's the entertainer, he's, he's the Logan and Jake Paul of UFC, I mean, he's the entertainer, he's not... He's not going, he, I mean, he should have went for the knockout, I mean, but he pointed and he didn't take the knockout, but that was, like, everyone knows about Nate Diaz because of that fight, I mean, an exceptional fight for him, I mean, it was just, it was just awesome to see him get, take a beating, stay, stay in, like, most people would have been out after the first round, yeah. like, he was getting destroyed, he, he has heart, and he has what it takes, I mean another and then another per, another fight. This well, well, just go just going back to the Nate Diaz thing. One thing I think is crazy how how UFC has structured their their fighting league where someone like Nate Diaz can have thirteen losses and keep losing, and off of this loss, all he's done is gain followers. He's probably going to get more money his next fight, even oh, yeah. by losing a fight. I mean that doesn't happen in boxing. You lose a fight in boxing, you're dropping down to the bottom. You're going to start fighting nobodies again. You're not going to make any money. I think it's crazy how Dana White has been able to make it where someone can lose, but you're so invested in the person that he could still make money. Well, yeah, it's just the thing with Nate Diaz. I mean, he's more of a personality than a fighter. I, I think now. I mean, he's everyone loves Nate. I don't think there's one person that doesn't love Nate. I mean, the the whole crowd was cheering for Nate, like every single person. And Leon Edwards is like a fan favorite as yeah, well. Yeah, Leon Edwards is not like a like a like a villain like that. Yeah, so he's not. So like that. you don't see that a lot. And yeah, and then um, before Jack cut me off, I was going to talk about Brandon Moreno and the f the f Figgy fight. I mean, shocking. Brandon Moreno, young guy. I mean. Figgy did drop a weight class, so that's he didn't look he didn't look good at the the weigh in at all. He looked off. He needs to go up a weight class. He looked he looked not in his place. But Brandon Moreno, I mean, just an incredible story. Like I mean, exactly what Jack said. This guy's nineteen five and two, and like he still had the chance to get his title. Like he had he got his title shot. He was able to he was able to like to still be able to get his title shot. And he was always about like after every fight he he in his press conferences after he won he was like i will be champion i will be champion inspiring and it, he finally got it it's just very inspiring very proud of him very happy that he that he got his title he deserved it all right and then on to our main event adesanya versus fatori no shocker in this one adesanya just controlled the fight i mean i i knew this was going to happen 
Vittori just wasn't it. You can't keep up with Adesanya in the middleweight division. It's just not possible. He moves up to light heavyweight. Maybe he can. But in the middleweight, it's just not going to happen. I mean, the one thing I thought was crazy is when Adesanya grabbed his you-know-what at the end of the fight when he had full control of him. Yeah. And that was just, I mean... The what I it's just crazy Adesanya's control his swagger just everything about him in the ring the the fact that he can have so much fun while absolutely obliterating every middleweight contender is just so impressive. I was actually not too happy with that fight. I wanted to see more hitting. I wanted to see a knockout. I mean Adesanya has that power, and I feel like he was just toying. Like he didn't well, really care about the knockout. The only thing is, I think he would have got the knockout if I mean Vittori saw that Adesanya was getting controlled on the ground a lot in the Yan fight. So what he did, he got seven minutes of control time. Tried to do the whole fight in jujitsu, but we know the fans don't like that. They don't want to see that. So yeah. no, I understand. I just wanted to see an Adesanya knockout, especially for the yeah. way that they were hyping up this fight. I thought it could have been better. I mean, it was unanimous decision yeah. in favor of Adesanya. I don't think anyone questioned that. But I mean. I don't know about I don't know about five rounds. Like Vittori didn't lose every round. Like I just I wasn't too happy with this fight. I mean you could look at the total strikes to not like it was a it was a thirty punch differential. Like it it didn't make sense to me that it was a that they said Adesanya won every round. He did destroy the fight, but like he it, it wasn't it wasn't as an exciting a fight as a main card should be, especially with Israel Adesanya. And I think that's something Dana needs to worry about is that it only got five hundred buys this fight. Like, yeah. it wasn't a... Not Definitely need to get to more. It. Well, the next pay-per-view is McGregor, so I'm sure they'll be good. That'll bring yeah. more excitement to the sport. And that's all the time we have today. Thank you for listening to Bergucci and Buff in the morning, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.